Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. I have a quick announcement to make. Um, Diana Larson and I are putting on a couple of training courses in October. Uh, the first one is called The Art of Agile Planning and it's October 11th and October 12th. The second one is called The Art of Agile Delivery and it is October 13th to October 15th. That's the second week of October. I'm mentioning this because I thought you might be interested. Uh, they're excellent courses that Diana and I have put on several times before. They really cover the whole of the Agile process. You know, if you really want to understand how Agile works um, as an enti in its entirety, including test-driven development, but all the other things as well, um, I'd recommend that you come to these courses. We're pricing them very competitively. Uh, they're going to be in Portland, Oregon, and they are designed to be taken together, so you can come for the whole week. Uh, we're providing a nice discount for that. And most people who've come to just once have said to me afterwards uh, that they wish they had plan to come to both, so something to consider. Anyway, if you're interested, go to jamesshore.com. Look in the left-hand side under training. You'll find the link. Um, the full URL is jamesshore.com slash training with a capital T. But uh, just go to jamesshore.com and look at the training link on the left-hand side. So thanks. Um, uh, thanks for your attention. So what, uh, where we... Actually, uh, I have to I have to make a confession. I recorded four episodes of good work being done on the UI, and I forgot to turn the microphone recording back on after my training montage video last time, which was done without sound. So uh, all those videos just had to be thrown away. I tried to do a voiceover. It just didn't work. So we're going to start over. The good news is, is that I have a bit more of a clue this time because I've already done some of this work. So, um, but you're not going to be able to see what it was really like the first time around. For, and for that, I apologize. But I am starting over. I've reverted my source code and everything. So let's go ahead and dive in. Um, what I want to do is it's time to get the UI up and running. And the problem with UI in just about every language is that it can be extremely difficult to test. So I'm going to start by creating the basic application, um, but I'm not going to start writing tests for it just yet. And the big reason for that is that I don't know how to write tests around some of this stuff. And the other reason is, is that I want to get sort of a bare bones system working so I can see it running, and then I'll start putting the tests in where it makes sense. Um, and I, I hope to get as many tests as can, can practically be done in Java using Swing um, by the time we're done. But I'm going to start out by just not doing a whole lot of tests to start with. So let's uh, run that. Okay, there we go. So, uh, in case you were wondering, uh, yes, I did decide on Swing as the uh, UI framework I was going to use. One of the options was to do client-side HTML and HTML generation. There, nobody's really doing that in Java, or not that I can see. It doesn't have a big following, uh, and I can understand why. It's just kind of a weird thing to do. So, that I ruled out pretty quickly. The next thing I looked at was SWT, and it... Uh, it had some things going for it, but I didn't really like the programming model. I like the MVC model of, of Swing. Uh, when I worked on Swing, uh, it, it's something I've done before, so it was coming back pretty quickly. It ran quite smoothly. One of the things I was concerned about was that people have claimed that Swing is really slow, and that was my experience years ago when I was first using it. Um, but when I ran SWT and Swing side by side, Swing was blazingly fast, and SWT was actually quite slow. So I decided to, uh, I actually settled on Swing because I like the programming model better and because it has the speed I need. Um, even if SWT had been fast though, I would have settled with Swing because of the programming model. But I was really surprised to see that SWT was so slow. That was probably partly because of the way I was using it. I was doing eight updating of something like 18,000 records, but Swing just handled it without a hiccup and SWT didn't. Uh, you can see the source code online. I've got a link at the last video, and I'll, we'll try to remember to check in the code from the end of this video as well. 
Okay, so we're going to use Swing, um, and I'm just going to get that up and running real quick. Um, you know what? Yeah, let's let's make a little build script. This is going to be a very very cheesy build script. Um, eventually, we're going to have to build jars and so forth, and we'll do a proper build script. But for now, I'm just going to do that because most of our building is actually happening in Eclipse, and that's not a good long-term solution, but it's good enough for now. Okay, so now let's get our application to show up. Let's see, how does that work? Okay, that should show up. It does. Okay, now we'll get the application running. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hard code in some, some things here, um, like the size and the position. And yes, I realize this is hard code and it's terrible, but what I wanted to do is show up in the video so I don't have to be constantly scrolling around. And yeah, let's make that a little bit bigger. There. Okay, so there's our frame. Now we need to get a table in there. Okay, so that should be our table. And let's uh, let's go ahead and just get a real The way uh, Swing works, of course, is by using models, um, and we'll just create a default table model for now. Uh, we're going to create our own model and hook it into the domain layer fairly soon. But um, I just, as I said, I, I just want to get basic screen up and running. And let's go ahead and grab that. Okay, there's our column titles. That's all good. And let's go ahead and Add a row.
Okay. That's all good. Okay, so that's just a little stub so we can do some visual testing of uh, the code. We're going to, in the next episode, what we're going to do is we're going to get into doing some actual testing, uh, test driven development on the model. Uh, what I'm thinking that I'll do, and this is what I did last time, so it's probably true, um, is I'm going to uh, create my own model class. And because that's completely divorced from the UI, it has methods on it that the UI uses, but it doesn't hook into any of the UI components or anything like that, that's something that can be completely test-driven. And that's a, a real advantage of the Swing model that I like a lot. Um, and it's going to allow us to do a lot of work without having to worry about how do you test all of this stuff um, while uh, actually making changes in the UI and seeing the testing happening. But we still need to be able to desk check it to make sure that my understanding of how all the stuff fits together is working properly and so forth. So that's what's going to come up next. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.